So it shouldn't from my from the, No. Uh, That's my husband. We're live. Hello. Hello. Nobody's watching yet, though. So that's, uh, we're in Spain. Somebody's watching now. Hello. Um, I'm going to talk, I do this thing on YouTube. I'm trying to figure out how I can do. You can see me? The sun's right behind yeah. me. Yeah. Maybe they can see us. <laughs> How's this? this way. Like this? The other way. The other way. Yes. No. Okay. So the sun is in everyone's face. This is, face. oh, right. That's, that's my husband telling me about how to do stuff. So this is my second Periscope. And I'm going to talk to Jonathan here about Lady Jane Grey, because I do this thing on YouTube. Um, how do I do it so that we can do reverse cameras so I can see the back of myself? I don't, I don't know, because right now we're just doing it with the regular. I can't see who's joined. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you can tell me <laughs> how to switch the camera around. <laughs> Double tap yeah. to flip camera. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Clever. Look, there's two people. There's two people watching. Hi. So I do this thing on YouTube called the Tudor Minute. And I thought that today I would do it with my husband because he's really into Renaissance history, right? Oh. Yeah. I really am. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and I'm going to upload this onto YouTube. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. Isn't yep. that clever? Yeah. yeah. And so um, let me tell you about Lady Jane Grey. I'm really excited. <laughs> you are, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's so excited. So Lady Jane Grey, hi to people who just joined. There's three people watching us. Hey. Ah, um, so Lady Jane Grey, she was the great niece of Henry VIII. Yeah. So her sister, or her mother, her mother was Henry VIII's niece. Okay. And when Henry VIII's son, Edward, was dying, yeah. he was a teenager, yeah. and he died very young. It's very sad. But okay. he was raised Protestant, and he reigned for five years, and he put all these Protestant reformations through. And, of course, this is, like, right after Henry VIII breaks from the church, from the Pope, and starts the Church of England. Yes. So his son, Edward, puts all these Protestant reforms through. Okay. And then Edward's dying. He's a teenager. Now, this is bad news for Edward because he's going to die, but it's also bad news for all the advisors who've been advising him because his heir is... Edward's older sister Mary, oh. who was Henry's daughter with Catherine of Aragon, mm. his first wife, who's a Catholic. Oh. And you can imagine how Mary feels about Protestants, considering it's Protestants who like destroyed her parents' marriage. Not, right? Yeah. So she's so all of his advisors are kind of freaked out like for their lives because if she comes into power mm -hmm. as a Catholic, she's gonna like behead them. And, That's not good. Right? Other for them. things. Right. Yes. And so Edward is conscious of all of this, and so are all of his advisors. And so he comes up with this thing where he's going to alter his father's will, and he calls it the device for his succession. Yep. And he uses this lo logic because Parliament, when Henry was getting rid of both Catherine of Aragon and Elizabeth's mother, Anne Boleyn, he had Parliament declare them both illegitimate. Okay. So Edward comes back and he says, look, both of my sisters were illegitimate. Even though Henry had included them in, their, in his will later, yeah. he said that both of his sisters were illegitimate. And because that was like his logic, because he wanted to get rid of the Catholic one, and he couldn't just keep the Catholic one, or keep the Protestant one, not the Catholic, because then the logic would have been false. Pretty harsh. Yeah. So he said, okay, both of my sisters are bastards. And we have to go to the to the next line, which is my cousin's line, who just yeah. conveniently happens to be Protestant. Mm. Fortunate. Ooh, fortunate for him. So Lady Jane Grey is the person that this falls on. She's the oldest daughter, and she's the one that they say, okay, she's going to be the heir. Mm -hmm. So this poor girl, she was like just this teenager. Who, she was like 16, 15, 16, and she was just really into her books and really kind of studious yeah. and all of yeah. that kind of stuff. And suddenly she's the heir to the throne, right? She, Another person just came care. on high. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. She didn't care at all. She just wanted to be this normal girl studying. Yeah. And so we're talking about Lady Jane Grey. So she finds out that she's the heir to the throne when she had no desire for this. And she mm -hmm. didn't want it. And I guess like when they crowned her, she said like, look, I don't want this, but I, if you're going to make me, then I'll, then I'll take it. Yeah. So she becomes queen reluctantly okay and so then but the thing is everybody knew that mary tudor was actually should have been should the, have been the queen yeah. the queen because even though they might have been protestant like they knew like she was doing something yeah. like, wrong yeah. and so um everybody rises to support mary mary tudor and she comes into london and it, the whole thing takes like only nine days wow right so her first instinct is to be 
generous and merciful and to say, okay, look, Jane Grey was an innocent in all of this. She was a pawn yeah. for her family and all of these other people. I'm not, But she kept her in the tower just because, you know, you kind of have to make sure, like, something. I mean, she did it. She, she was an imposter. You know, she yeah. claimed the throne, even though she was reluctant. She, yeah. she still did it. Yeah. So she kept her in the tower along with her husband. That was the other thing. They had married her. Jane Grey's family had married her off to the family of one of the top nobles, um, mm. Guilford Dudley. And Strategic. so. And the thing is, because when Jane Grey was queen, yeah. they wanted her to make him king, to crown him king. Of course. And she wouldn't. No. Oh. Because she was like, look, I'm not even supposed to be queen. Yeah. No way I'm going to call you. I'm someone else. Am I gonna way make not supposed to be. Yeah. To call him king, right? I like so it. that, yeah, yeah, exactly. She had, she had standards or. She, well, I something, don't know. yeah. And so, <laughs> and so, um, so then Mary comes in and, and she's like, okay, I'm going to be merciful to you. But then there's all these like rebellions, right? Okay. And they all use. Jane as their figurehead. It mm -hmm. really sucks when you're like a figurehead because she wasn't, she didn't even want to be a Especially figurehead. if you didn't even want to be. Right? She yeah. wanted to be a figurehead in all yeah. of this. And so Jane keeps being the figurehead in all of these rebellions. And there was a, a famous one. And, Jane was, and Jane's father was just an idiot too because he like was part of the first one. And then he escapes with his life, lucky fellow. And then he takes part in another one. You, another one what? Another rebellion oh. against Mary. Like, you'd think that he would just be grateful that he survived. Did he survive the, the first one? Right? But he's trying again. He's trying again. Yeah. And that gets him killed and his daughter killed. Bad, bad news. Bad. Yeah. So Jane was executed. Oh. She was only, like, 16. Oh. And there's a really famous painting of her um, by Paul Delaroche that was, took the Paris Salon in 1834, took the Paris Salon by, by storm, um, where this, you see this innocent young girl being led to the block, and like she had to, um, they had to guide her to the block, she couldn't see it, she had her, all of that, and, and so uh, she was killed, and she only, she was clean for nine days, and she was only like 16, and that's Lady Jane Grey. She didn't even want all that stuff going on. No. But you know, much this stuff. Periscope is like, I'm going to put this on YouTube for my tutor minute. Yep. So people know you can go on YouTube and search for Tudor Minute because there's lots of other ones. And also, we do the Renaissance English History Podcast. I do it. He doesn't. No. No. But so you, if you're interested in this kind of thing, you can go to the Renaissance English History Podcast. You can subscribe. And so you can go to englandcast.com, E-N-G-L-A-N-D-C-A-S-T.com. Or you can go to facebook.com slash englandcast to learn more. See, that was my helper for the day. Yeah. Yeah, thank it's our, you. It's our anniversary. It is our anniversary. We were married nine years. Yep, that nine many. Nine years, that many, this many. All right. Thanks for watching. Good seeing you people. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's swipe down to double tap. Oh my gosh. Slide down to stop. stop. Stop, okay, sorry. Stop broadcast, but I want to um, make sure that I see it. That's all.